Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season we're discussing issues that I personally wrestle with with regard to the faith, and today we'll discuss whether people in heaven will have emotions like we do. This issue occurred to me while I was reading, He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Matthew 10, 37. We could, of course, just say that this verse refers to love as a priority, not an emotion, but it's not the only verse in the Bible that raises an issue related to heavenly emotions. He shall cast down headlong forever, and the Lord God shall wipe away tears from every face. Isaiah 25, 8a And they shall be no more for a spoil to the nations, neither shall the beasts of the earth devour them, but they shall dwell securely without any terror. Ezekiel 34, 28 At the very least, it seems that emotions like sadness and fear will be over and done with, but what about the richness of human happiness and excitement? Is there any indication that it survives the trip to heaven? And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of great thunders, saying, Alleluia! For the Lord our God the Almighty hath reigned. Let us be glad, and rejoice, and give glory to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath prepared herself. Revelation 19, 6-7 So we have every reason to think that all emotions that are needed for gladness are present in heaven, while emotions that only tear us down or tempt us into evil will be gone, simply because there won't be a need for them there. With no more evil or shortcomings, anger and sadness no longer have the same purpose, and with no more danger of being destroyed, terror isn't needed either. Those in heaven can be excited and enthusiastic without needing any of these destructive feelings. There is one more issue to discuss, however. According to Thomistic theology, the saints in heaven will have the quality of impassiveness, making them impervious to unwelcome passions. St. Thomas Aquinas and many other early theologians believed that God was utterly emotionless, or at least that was what they wrote. However, when they use the word emotion, they seem to be referring more to spiritual temptations and other factors that affect how you make decisions, like some impulse that biases or influences your free will decisions in some way. In human beings, this is certainly part of our emotional experience. We all know what it's like to make a poor choice when we were in a bad mood. However, that's not all that emotions are. The impulse to take a certain kind of action is only one of the consequences of emotions. Emotions also provide experiences, sensations of delight, excitement, pleasure, pain, remorse, and so on. And we know that not all of those affect our free will decisions, because we can make the free choice to do something we don't feel like doing. So, while God's self-control must be perfect, and therefore he must not have any impulses that would threaten that self-control, that's no reason to think he can't experience the sensations that emotions have to give, and probably many more we've never even heard of. I suspect the saints in heaven have similar feelings to that, sensations for their enjoyment, but not impulsiveness to harm their self-control. Next, what is a fisher of men? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.